Hi there. I'm an American soccer fan that is about to do a video on a big problem that's going on in England's third tier of football. Why? Because it's so mind-boggling to me that this is even a problem nowadays and the situation is so mind-boggling to me that I feel the need to just talk it out to maybe even have it make sense a little bit because I can't help but think what if this happened to my club? Those who know me know that I am in ardent support of St. Louis City SC, and if you didn't know that, you could probably surmise that based on some of the stuff going on behind my left shoulder here. And you might think that MLS is down bad right now, and if you're a St. Louis City SC fan, you've got a lot of reasons to really not like the league right now, but none of it is as unfathomable as what's going on right now in Reading, England. Before we go to Reading, I want to show you the training grounds of St. Louis City SC. They're barely five years old, they're modern, brand spanking new for the most part. They have a Washington University Performance Center on site that is, you know, top of its class, and it also houses its corporate offices. Took multi, multi million dollars to build, and it is right in the heart of the city, next door to its stadium, City Park. It's a big part of the transformation of this area of St. Louis in case you're not familiar. It's also where the academy players play all their games as well as train as well. So the present and the future are being basically forged on these fields. And this training facility being so good is a major selling point for players that St. Louis is trying to lure to the city over other MLS clubs or maybe even other clubs around the world. Now the team is owned by Carolyn Kindle and the Taylor family and a group of other owners, all that make in the multi-millions of dollars and all that are actually multi-millionaires, not just on paper. But imagine, if you will, that Carolyn Kindle, the face of the ownership group of St. Louis, suddenly went into financial hardship for whatever reason. Pick a scenario in your own mind. And she needed to make a quick buck in order to continue operating the team and paying her players and her staff. So desperate that she decides to sell this amazing training facility, this multi-million dollar state-of-the-art training facility to a team that is a half hour away from St. Louis. Also, that she can keep operating St. Louis City SC. We'll use St. Charles FC and USL2 as an example of a club that is a half hour away from St. Louis, literally because I don't have any better options. Now, St. Charles FC recently just got practice grounds themselves. Maybe they have dreams of having their own stadium down the road. Maybe they see this multi-million dollar facility as a possible investment, especially if they're able to get it pennies on the dollar. Now, this whole scenario that I'm laying out to you sounds completely ridiculous, doesn't it? I mean, this would never happen, right? In England, it is happening right now, today. Bearwood Park is a state-of-the-art training ground owned by Reading FC. They opened the facility less than five years ago, basically around the same time that St. Louis was confirmed to even get an MLS team, much less have ground broken on its own training facility. When Bearwood Park opened, the team had just fallen into the Skybed Championship and were keen on bouncing right back up. This training facility was a symbol of that hope. It was an investment in the future of the team from the top to the bottom, and it was a selling point for Chinese businessman Dai Young when he bought the club in 2019. It's 120 acres of fields and facilities in the woodlands of Berkshire, just west of London. It's a beautiful facility in a beautiful setting, and it sits just five miles from Reading Stadium. Meanwhile, Wickham Wanderers are a League One club 26 miles from Reading's home stadium. It takes roughly a half hour, maybe a little longer, to get from Wickham to Reading. So imagine the surprise of Reading fans if you told them in 2019 when this magnificent facility built that just five years later they'd be selling this 50 million pound site to a League One club for pennies on the dollar. And that club that was buying that facility was the Wickham Wanderers, who at the time were two tiers below Reading when this facility was even first a concept. Yes, 
it is happening. The club confirmed Thursday morning it's proceeding with the process to sell Bearwood Park to Wickham Wanderers, saying, quote, the proposed transaction will directly support the short-term funding of the club until a full sale can be concluded, end quote. They don't even know where their team will train once the sale goes through. Maybe a lease can be worked out with Wickham, but if it costs Dai Young money, don't bet on it. Now, it's not confirmed what the price of the sale of Bearwood Park will be, but it's rumored to be about 22 million pounds, which is less than half of what it cost to build the facility just five years ago. And I'll go ahead and answer the question that's probably in your mind right now. How does this make it easier for Dai Young to sell the club now, now that he's selling one of its best assets for pennies on the dollar? He's supposedly trying to sell the club, right? Wouldn't you want to sell the facilities with the club? According to The Athletic, there was an interested buyer in Reading, but that buyer is now walking away from takeover talks because of this short-term, short-sighted sale of the team's training grounds. And with the team sitting near the bottom of League One, already docked points because it can't pay its bills, with the possibility of more points being docked because it can't pay its bills, with more debts than assets, and a team that might slide down to League Two if things don't go their way the rest of the season and they're docked more points, the future of Reading FC looks bleaker than ever if one of its biggest selling points, one of the best training grounds outside the Premier League, is no longer among its assets. Remember when I said that they were aiming to get back into the Premier League and had just been dropped from the Premier League when this facility opened? It feels like a long, long time ago. And that point is not lost on Reading FC supporters. The protest group Sell Before We Die smells a rat here. In a statement, they feel that Dai Young and the rest of the group aren't really interested in selling the club at all. That they just want to treat Reading FC, mind you, a 152-year-old club, one of the oldest clubs in the world, like a stolen vehicle that's going to a chop shop and being stripped down for parts. Further, the group continues to criticize the governing body of English football for not doing enough to step in and save this historic club, a statement that they've made before, only to apparently fall on deaf ears. You know, we, we talk about the football family, but when times are hard, this is where we see people really come out, um, come out of the woodwork and, and actually see people's true character. If ever there was a club that um, epitomizes that you are only bat, one bad owner away from oblivion, then, you know, essentially it's Reading Football Club. Yeah, the football family needs to really take a, take a closer look at it, look at itself. And as an American, it just baffles me why the English FA is apparently incapable of stepping in. Now, I don't know all the rules for the FA and when it comes to stepping in and taking ownership of clubs that are struggling like this, but it does kind of seem based on history that the FA is willing to just let clubs like this die. Barry was a good example of this, and there are at least a few other clubs since 2000 that they have allowed to dissolve and then reemerge as Phoenix clubs. In the NHL here in the States, the NHL stepped in and took control of the Arizona Coyotes within the last decade or two. That's an ongoing boondoggle for sure for anyone that is familiar with hockey, but one that the NHL saw value in and stepped in to keep alive. And mind you, the Coyotes do not have anywhere near the history of Reading FC, so why doesn't the FA see the value in stepping up and saving this historic club? Well, that's one reason why Sell Before We Die is planning a protest outside Wickham Stadium Friday evening and are encouraging both Reading and Wickham fans to join in. Now, Wickham is also being criticized for taking advantage of Reading in this deal, although they have been looking to upgrade their training grounds themselves and they saw an opportunity and they took it. This is not an unprecedented thing in English football for a team that is struggling financially to sell its training ground. Wigan Athletic bought a training complex in 2016 that belonged to the Bolton Wanderers, who also were in dire financial straits at the time. Wigan then sold it to Preston North End in 2020 after suffering their own financial hardships courtesy of COVID. And again, I'm in the middle of America. Why am I talking about this issue that is happening in the middle of England? Well, for one, because it is completely unfathomable and unprecedented as an American soccer fan, but another, to give some perspective to St. Louis fans who may be feeling irked about the team and the MLS for one reason or another, some fans probably feel it can't get worse for them right now. Stories like Reading do remind you that it could always be worse. 
and you could be in the same situation as Reading fans are right now, hoping that someone, whether it be the owner, the FA, someone, steps in and sells the team before it dies. Now I've touched on this issue before, you can check out the video above my finger here as well. I'm also going to link a interview in the description below from my friend Chal and Doncaster who had the clip earlier with the Sell Before We Die representative. This is a situation that I feel deserves your attention because it's kind of scary that such a thing can happen to an historic club like Reading, a team that has such a passionate fan base like Reading's and that no one is stepping in. We'll see what happens to Reading as the season goes on. Right now, they are safe in League One right now, just a few points above the relegation spots. But again, if they do get docked points, they could be going down to League Two or even worse, oblivion. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this as I continue to explore the world of soccer outside of my own borders here. And if you're an English footy supporter that happened to stumble upon this channel, leave a comment below to either vent your feelings on Die Young, tell us how we can support Reading fans or sell before we die from over here in America, or maybe just shed some light and help us understand this absolute disaster that is going on here and maybe explain why no one is stepping in to help. But in the meantime, I'm your soccer zombie, Tom Franklin, and I'll see you next time.